For I think that God hath set forth us, the apostles, last. The apostles, apostolos, sent one. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 14, by the way. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, please. Follow me along. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were, appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men, a spectacle. Come, see the church of the living God, those who trust on the Lord, who depend on him every whim, for every moment, for every, even to put one step before the other. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels, angels who are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. And of course, one who is transformed into an angel of light. Hmm. You know, there's an easier way. Just give in a little bit. Don't, don't hold to the standard of the authorized version of the scriptures. <laughs> don't do that. No, give in. Bend a little. The, the strongest tree in the, in the forest is the one that bends. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Hmm. You know, in the book of Isaiah, it has mentioned that the Lord will call his servants by another name. And a lot of people like to take that and attribute that to Christian. But you always have to remember, you always have to remember Christian is a label labeled upon the church of God by the lost world. It was not something that we ourselves referred to as ourselves. Okay? Unfortunately, that has stuck. And unfortunately, that is probably not going to go away. Unfortunately not. But let me ask you. How much time have you spent in witnessing trying to explain the differences between Christians? Because remember, Catholics are Christians. Lutherans are Christians. Baptists are Christians. <laughs> uh, Mormons are Christians. <laughs> Non-denominationals are Christians. King James Bible-believing Christians are Christians. And isn't it interesting about that, that King James Bible believers has become another denomination? Isn't it interesting, the thing that most of us who adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures, the one thing that we never wanted to see happen is happening. King James Bible-believing Christianity is now a denomination. <laughs> and that's something. And that's something. We are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. Mm. We are the ones who trust on the Lord for our daily bread. We say, Lord, if you don't, we ain't. The one who opens doors and closes doors. Hmm. But yet, some of you, you Christians, you got it all figured out. You got your plans, right? Nah. Yeah. We are weak. Oh, we who are of the church of the living God, truly saved, born again, converted new creatures in Christ Jesus. We are weak. But ye are strong. Oh, you Christians. 
is strong. See, we are weak that Christ may be strong within us. Therefore, we joy in our, in our infirmities. Why? The weaker we are, excuse me, the stronger Christ will be in us. We are weak, but ye are strong, you Christians. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Hmm. Uh, uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, I read an email this morning that just rent my heart. Um, and on to you who sent me that email. You know who you are if you see this. Um, I'm going to email you back. I, I, I would like very much to be able to speak with you face to face. Very much so. But and don't, don't reply in the comments. Please reply via email. If you, you see this, you know who you are, okay? But 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. Verse 10 in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. You Christians, you got all your plans, huh? You got it all planned and figured out. You know, you know exactly what verses in Scripture to go to to get what you want from people. You got it all figured out. Got it all planned out. Hmm. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. What are you trusting in? You're trusting in the Lord to bless your endeavors? Hmm. Been there, done that. That, that. that doesn't work. It works only for so long. Until all things, those things that are shaken, be taken out of the way that, so that, that those things that cannot be shaken will remain. That's Brad eyes from the book of Hebrews. Go find it. Okay? Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Amen. But you Christians, you got it all figured out, right? You got a plan. You have worldly untapped resources. It's not so for us of the church of the living God. It's not so for us. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord for it. Have you ever been hungry? Have you ever been thirsty? Our Lord says, uh, uh, Blessed are you who hunger and thirst now. For ye shall be filled. Yes. Now you got to, then again, you got to remember when he said that, he was talking about the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But, yes. And are naked. I ain't naked. And are buffeted. And have no certain dwelling place. Amen. Amen. How many of you are uncertain whether or not you're going to be able to pay your rent? Pay your bills, huh? But yet, the Christians, they have it all figured out. They have it all figured out with their programs and with all their schemes. But here we are. Here we are. And yes, our Lord will furnish the table in the wilderness. Yes, yes. His seed, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread, yes. But from getting from point A to B, that's the glory of it. That's the glory of it. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. 
Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Warn you of what? 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly, godly, set apart other, different, other than that, other than Christianity. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Oh, wow. Hmm? Deceiving and being deceived. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hmm. Hmm. It, it's so amazing that that which is called King James Bible believing Christianity has, is just a mere denomination now of what is called Christendom. With all the tenets and all the um, traits of the other denominations out there. Think about it. Non-denomination. Remember when they came out with the, we're non-denominational. <laughs> you're, de you're a denomination. Non-denominational. You're a denomination. You're King James Bible-believing Christians. You're, you're a denomination. <laughs> um, the scriptures speaks against denominations. But then again, that's not being ecumenical. Oh, be careful with that. See, that's where the devil comes in with his satanic ecumenicalism. Oh, we all believe in Jesus Christ. No, we don't. We all we all read the same Bible. Oh uh, no, we definitely don't. <laughs> uh, I don't read a Bible. I read the scriptures. Yes, it says Holy Bible. Yes, yes. And hey, by the way, uh, you you know you want to call this the Holy Bible? Go ahead. That's not a sin. But remember, distinction, distinction. You know, the way we live our lives according to the scriptures ought to be the distinguishing factor between us and the lost world and us and the Christians. But yet, when it comes to this laughable thing about these denominations, especially the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity, okay, you are still exhibiting the same traits and qualities of the other denominations that so many of us vehemently detest, but yet so many of you that are adhering were King James Bible-believing Christians. You've made yourself into a denomination. That, that, that ought to be alarming to you that ought to be alarming to you because you know <laughs> we are supposed to be different but in order to be different we still have to do things likewise the same as those other denominations out there that's right 2 plus 2 equals 36 that's right I, I forgot about that I forgot about that. But see, there are those that come along, though. Okay? Verse 13, here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There are those that come around. 
Go to Ezra, Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 on the verse 5. Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 on the verse 5. Have you ever looked on these social media sites? such as our unbiased and caring, uh, loving friends here at YouTube, uh, but on the other social media uh, sites, such as Bitchu, um, Brighton, <laughs> Rumble, um, Odyssey. Have you ever know, have you, have you stopped and noticed? There's a lot of Christians out there. There is. There's a lot of Christians out there. Now, granted, on the social media sites, like I've spoke to you before, you're going to primarily come across one of the three C's. Catholic, Calvinist, or Charismatic. Okay? Those are pretty much the three, three that you're going to come across when you search Christian in one of the search engines on these social media sites. Yeah, you're going to come across, across Catholic, Calvinist or charismatic. And unless, like I've mentioned to you before, unless you know specifically what you're looking for, that's primarily, those three is what you're going to run into. The three C's. Hmm. But there are a lot of Christians out there. A lot of Christians out there who are wise in Christ, who are strong and honorable. Got it all figured out. Got their little nest eggs. Hmm. Ezra chapter 4 verses 1 on to verse 5. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel, the adversaries. Then they came to Zerubbabel. And to the chief of the fathers. So the adversaries came to Zerubbabel and the chief of the fathers. Okay. And said unto them. Let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do. We're all Christians. We all believe the same God. No we don't. No we don't. We all, we all read the Bible. Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't. We all believe in the Trinity. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> there, are, there are big differences between the Church of the Living God and Christianity. Big differences. I understand that that term is not going to go away. I also understand that it is a worldly term labeled upon us. I understand that's not going away. But, um, you know, I'm to live by an example. And it's not that hard to reword the way you speak concerning things. Because like I said to you before, how, what, 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 you're going to spend a half an hour, an hour, trying to distinguish the difference between your uh, Christianity and the Christianity that is readily available. <laughs> you know, when someone's like, oh, so you're a Christian. It's like, no, sir, I'm not a Christian. But you're talking about Jesus. Like, you called me a Christian. We don't call ourselves that. Oh, it's a lot easier than you think. And with what's going on right now, Again, distinction. Distinction. You can talk about how distinct you are, you know, and all this stuff, but yet you're still using worldly means and you are still, you are still a denomination. Just like any other Christian out there. But, but, but you're the true Christians, right? doesn't make sense to me. Because remember, let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Azar Hedon, 
king of Assur, which brought us up hither. We seek your God like you do. Hey, let's all get along. It's not going to happen. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us. <laughs> Ye have nothing to do with us, church of the living God. You have everything to do with what is Christian. But what is with but that which is of the church of the living God? <laughs> Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. And of course, we are reading this for our instruction in righteousness. We are not building temples today, unlike what Catholics and Charismatics and Calvinists and King James Bible-believing Christians want you to believe. We're not building uh, temporal kingdoms down here, okay? We're not. Or building temporal temples down here, okay? We're not doing that, okay? This is an instruction for righteousness. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, as King Cyrus Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, all right. The king of Persia hath commanded us. So Zerubbabel rightly so. It's like, hey, you say you are of us, but you have nothing to do with us. So go away. Go go worship your little Christian God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go worship in your building. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go bow down at the foot of a man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Leave, leave us alone. Go do what you're going to do. You know, pat yourself on the back and count your, you know, see how you built your big barns and you can sit back and take your ease. I got it made, man. Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. So instead of, it's like, oh, fine. I'm, instead of let bygones be bygones, what happened? Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. Hmm, troubled them in building. There are those who will kill you who think they are doing God's service. That's more for future things, but it is also relative today. While we might not be actually literally being killed, but oh... The smearing campaigns, the slandering campaigns, the outright lying. That's why I have no respect for those who purposely sow division. No respect. Let me make... That's why I think of you. Love you. That's why I think of you. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, or Darius, if you want to say it that way, king of Persia. And remember, there were many who believed on the Lord when he spake unto them. And then when he talked about, uh, you know, eating his flesh and stuff like that, which was a metaphor Okay, not literal, you Catholics. Um, at the end of that, those who believed on him wanted to kill him. You know, we be Abraham's seed. If you were Abraham's seed, you would love me. That wasn't, uh, excuse me, that wasn't necessarily right after the uh, whole thing about, you know, eating my flesh. No, that wasn't. But the point is... <laughs> Those who believed on the Lord, when he put that his finger on that one thing that they lacked, they wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't it interesting that, I mean, check it out yourself. There are a lot of Christians out there, especially online. There are a lot of Christians Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
prophesy. Speak truth from the scriptures even. Some can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And in thy name have cast out devils like the charismatics who lay their hands on people and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And in thy name done many wonderful works. I've given thousands of dollars and done all this time, de dedicated my time and efforts and whatnot. And I've, I've even prophesied in your name and didn't cast out devils, but hey, if you're a charismatic, the, the shoe fits, right? All those things are good. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. But I pray, I read the scriptures. What God are you praying unto? What God are you praying unto? What God are you having converse with? Again, I got it, I got it I, for you dear charismatics out there. If you're praying and having converse with a God who appeared to you, you're not praying or speaking with the true God of the scriptures. And that ghost that torments you, tell her to get a haircut. Okay? Many people think they know Jesus. But do they really know him? You know, it's easy when someone is in prosperity. But what about when you're down in the dirt and barely getting by? Hmm? Go to John chapter 3. John chapter... Uh, our beloved said this to me the other day. And it, 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 it spurned this. <laughs> <laughs> or meet this to come because we I see a lot of Christians increasing and I see a lot of people growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger but the church of the living God our time is coming to an end well that's just the blessing of the Lord You are honorable as a Christian. But we are despised as the church of the living God. Hmm. That's right. 2 plus 2 equals 36, doesn't it? John chapter 3, verses 25 on to verse 36. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples about uh, disciples and the Jews about purifying. Wait a minute, am I reading you the right thing? Yes, yes. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Amen. Amen. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. And this is talking about uh, Isaiah chapter 40, which we're going to look at. Okay. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Notice that he says, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. And the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden in Genesis chapter 3. We're going to hear a voice say, come up hither. Come up hither. Hmm. He must increase. But I must decrease. Now, what is John specifically talking about here? Isaiah chapter 40. And the Lord had me to do a video on this. Um, the spirit of Elijah, which will be in the description box. Um, I'm not going to get into it. Please watch that video. 
But um, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 on to verse 5. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight. Straight, because narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And John pointed straight to Jesus Christ. Okay? And the rough place is plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed as the Spirit descending as light. A dove on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Here's another verse, brother, that shows that more than John saw the uh, Spirit descending on Jesus like as a dove, more than just he saw it. Okay, here's another proof text for you. But this is John the Baptist. This is John the Baptist. He was the forerunner. Okay, that's why he said he must increase, but I must decrease. But see, to instruct us in our righteousness as the church of the living God. God giveth the increase. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But in these times, so close to the redemption of the purchased possession, I, I question greatly. Those who apparently claim to be saved are yet rolling around in prosperity. Is that possible for someone for someone who is saved to have that happen? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. Ab and absolutely it is. I'm not denying that. That is possible. But with everything that... We, we see today and we are reading in scripture that warns us of the times to come. It just seems out of place, doesn't it? Doesn't it? He must increase, but I must decrease. Are you decreasing? Or are you increasing? Well, the Lord is blessing you. Amen. But in that blessing, are you increasing in your pride? Are you increasing in your stability, in the fact that you have a nest egg, that all the world go to hell, you you got your little things like your barns build up for you, right? Hmm. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Hmm. And just like uh, like today I read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he who is of the earth is earthly. He who is of, uh, is of heaven is the Lord, is the Spirit or whatever. That's totally brad eyes. That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But yes, yes, he that is earthly is earthly, speaks of things of the earth. He who is of heaven, the Lord, speaks of heavenly things. Hmm. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. Ah. Right there. And no man receiveth his testimony. You know, it's to the point nowadays where your testimony isn't primarily in that what you will speak, but more in how you behave, which will tell a lot more about you. Because remember, there are a lot of Christians out there. There are a lot of Christians out there. And I've heard people who are lost give glowing testimony. I know people, charismatics actually, who purport to believe the same doctrine as the Church of the Living God, uh, the true salvation, new creature, Death, burial, and resurrection, you know, uh, the blood cleanseth from all sin. The yes, but they're lost. Because the God on whom they are trusting is not the God of the scriptures. Hmm. He that hath received his testimony has sent to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. 
For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. What God are you believing on? What God are you believing on? Again, i got to tell you, dear friends, if you're believing on a God that appeared to you, you are not believing on the God of the Scripture. If you're believing on a God who is okay with you saving yourself by your just your mere belief, you're not serving the God of the Scriptures. If you're believing on a God who's going to grant you repentance after you clean up your life, you're not believing on the God of the Scriptures. If you're believing on a God who is okay with all the denominations there together, with all of them, and that they're all okay and that they all serve him. You're not serving the God of the Scriptures. You're not. Hmm. He must increase, but I must decrease. Like I said, there are a lot of Christians on YouTube. A lot of them. There are a lot of Christians on BitChute. Quite a few on Brighton. Rumble is stupid. <laughs> Rumble is very hard to find things on. Uh, you have to have an exact word type. I mean, at least here on YouTube, if you misspell, they can generally guess where you're going. But you, but, but Rumble, you really got to be. And Odyssey? Ugh, Odyssey is hard to find things too. Brighton? So-so. Uh, So-so. But... There are a lot of Christians out there. Isn't it interesting that the closer we are getting onto the redemption of the purchased possession, there are so many Christians just boop, popping out of the woodwork, just crawling out of the woodwork. He must increase, but I must decrease. Hmm. So is Christ increasing in these days? Before the redemption of the purchased possession? Well, you look online here and you see all these Christians, you'd say yes. But then again, like I told you, most of what you will see as Christian on these social media sites are of the, the big three. Catholic, Calvinist, or Charismatic. And ironically, these three are one, ironically. And they all have roots Unto Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Brad, you're saying of Calvinists? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I, 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 have, I read Calvinistic literature. There are some Calvinists out there who have preached. Uh, Jonathan Edwards, you want a good sermon here? Uh, sinners in the hand of an angry God. Okay? There are Calvinists out there that are spot on in their presentation of the gospel. There are Calvinists, uh, not a lot of Calvinists that I've encountered or seen are, um, are about the redemption of the purchased possession. Some are, most aren't, okay? And of course, you got Catholic. Those are the, the big three that you are going to be running into. And I want us to consider this. Isaiah chapter 57 Verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Isaiah 57, verses 1 and 2. See, we are told in Scripture that in the last times, perilous time, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Because what? Men will be lovers of their own selves. Okay? And... There were godly preachers before in the past. Absolutely there were. Lester Roloff, who died in a plane crash. Eon Paisley, who is a Presbyterian. But wow, you talk about someone who cast down fire. Okay? Absolutely. Yes, there were godly preachers of the past. But look what's being <laughs> raised up in the stead of the Great godly preachers of the past. 
What's being raised up? A whole lot of nothing. But yet, there's an abundance of it. In the days preceding the redemption of the purchased possession, there is not going to be a revival. And for us of the church of the living God, yes, there are exceptions. Those who are doing the work of the Lord, who the Lord will take care of and provide for, yes. But on a general, in a general sense, um, the Christians, they are honorable. But we who are truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus, of the church of the living God, we're the small guy. We are despised. And... When godly righteous preachers are disappearing, what's being raised up in their stead? Bible flock box. Uh, Acts 17 apologetics. Wow. Wow. Legionnaires disease ministries. Justin Peters. <laughs> the last reformation, those crazies from Australia. <laughs> the black Hebrew Israelites. I was sent something about that, about some idiot guy saying that, yes, black people are the true Jews. And I commented in that email, it's like, you, you it's, you can't deal, you can't reason with those people who say that. There's no, there's, let them alone. See, that's a sign though. Sign of these times. Isaiah 57 verses 1 and 2. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. And oh boy! Oh boy, you talk about a reference onto the redemption of the purchase possession uh, within the Old Testament. <laughs> um, that could definitely be tied in. Yes, yes. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth at the heart. The good godly preachers of the past that have gone away, that are dead, what has been raised up in their stead? Um, tares have been sown amongst the wheat, and an enemy hath done this. Because remember in Jeremiah, go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23. You know, you ought to spend some time in the book of Jeremiah, especially in these last days. Jeremiah chapter 23, <laughs> verses 21 on the verse 22. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. And we've talked about this before. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. And you see this definitely within the charismatic movement about these prophetic dreamers and visionaries. Uh, boy, ever since the Lord had me to come out with those videos up against the charismatic nonsense, oh boy, things have really been happening. <laughs> but, yeah, you see, I mean, you see a lot of these, you know, prophetic word this, prophetic dream this, the, the Lord appeared to me, I saw the Lord, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. But no, these people are turning them to themselves. Through their religious experiences, through their feelings. Yeah. Yeah. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. And like we've talked about before, one of the one of the biggest traits of a false prophet is how they want to run to be in the forefront. Personally, I don't want to be a big 
presence here at all. I, I'm glad that I have way under 500 subscribers, okay? But yet YouTube messes with my videos all the time. Excuse me. But YouTube messes with the videos that the Lord has given me to do, that the Lord has given me to do. Uh, YouTube is constantly messing with the, the videos, constantly. It's weird. It's very weird. Very weird. But yet, one of the telltale traits of a false prophet is that they run to the forefront, that they want to be known. They are, they are the man or woman of the hour. He must increase. We must decrease. But yet, what is increasing right now is not of God. Hmm. Interesting. And of course, we go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 8. We, we've gone over these well, lots of times before. But you know, brethren, people, it ought to alarm you at the number of Christians there are out there right now. <laughs> and it ought to alarm you that the number of Christians is ever growing. And that runs contrary to what we read in the Pauline epistles leading up to the redemption of the purchase possession. That's right. 2 plus 2 equals 36. I charge thee, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 8. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Not your feelings. Not your emotions. Not your visual stimuli. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And yes, people's ears are itching. That's exactly what is happening today. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables that you can save yourself by your own belief. That God will save you after, or give you repentance after you clean up your life. God loves you. <laughs> God loves you. And God has no requirements for you. Everybody's going to be saved. Uh, you can know you're saved by evidence of speaking in tongues. You can know you're saved because the Lord will appear to you. Fables. Fables. Hmm. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. He must increase, but I must decrease. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. He must increase. But I must decrease. But the increase that we are seeing right now is not a return unto truth or to the God of the scriptures. No. No. That's not what we're seeing now, is it? Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 20. Hmm. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. 
Oh, these Christians are very zealous. <laughs> you talk with some of these Christians. How did the Lord save you? He saved me when I believed. So you're saved by your belief. Yes, I am saved by my belief. Oh, okay, so you saved yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. But you, you start talking with some of these Christians and you start to question some of their, you know, easy believism things and their zealousness comes out. Oh, they're very zealous for their feelings and for their emotions. I had an experience. And see, that's the thing. A lot of these people will have a religious experience. See, when the Lord saved me over 14 years ago now, there were no bells and whistles, no lights from heaven, nothing coming down, ah, nothing like that. But see, sensationalism and emotionalism. You know, that's why the charismatics are so popular, because they give you a lying sign and wonder. You speak in devil, the tongues of devils, blah, 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 blah. so you're saved. Okay? You put away X, Y, Z, and then the Lord will grant you repentance. Hmm. I just believed. Hmm. And when you question those things, oh, oh, they're very zealous. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. And of course, with that, you read in Galatians chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 14. <laughs> I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Yeah. 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 I would they were even cut off which trouble you. A. Eh? For, brethren, ye have been called on to charity. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> uh, for, brethren, ye have been called on to liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm. Hmm. To serve one another. To serve one another. And these people who have a religious experience <laughs> or a sensational experience, they're not serving others. It's all about themselves and what they have experienced. It's about your experience, not truth. Mm. And also in Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 14, as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. And see, that's what they're doing. Glorify, glorying in your flesh. Because you had the same experience that they did. You had the same sign happen that they did. Not that you both um, enjoy and love the truth. No, but it's about a fleshly carnal experience, religiosity. See, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. Everything has to be turned into religion. And true religion is self-sacrifice. But religion is right now self-serving. Even the denomination of King James Bible believe in Christianity. Hmm. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Go back to Galatians chapter 4, verse 18. But it is good, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, 
and not only when I am present with you, my little children, of whom I travail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. And then you go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 is warning about the spiritual climate, if you will, before the time of Jacob's trouble, because Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 and 15. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Oh, yeah, they become zealously affected. Yeah. Yeah, they become quite zealously affected. Quite zealous. Especially when you bring into question. You just believed, so you saved yourself? You gave up all this and then the Lord saved you? Oh, God loves everybody, so everybody's going to be saved? Oh, you're saved because you spoke in tongues or the Lord appeared unto you? Back to Galatians chapter 6, verse uh, uh, 16 on to, uh, no, 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 Galatians chapter 5, excuse me, verses 16 on to verse 24, Galatians chapter 5. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Lust of the flesh, see, they make a sh fair shoe in the flesh. By having their religiosity, relishing in their little denomination, a fair shoe in the flesh, okay? For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. Going out uh, against your spouse. Fornication. Relations before marriage. Uncleanness. Defiling yourselves with idols. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Whether it be a marionette statue, an idea, a principle. Whatever it is. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulation. Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts but yet those affections and lusts come out within your denomination and see that's the whole thing it's a visual thing. These denominations that are going on today. These Christians that are coming up from everywhere. Christianity is on the rise. I want nothing to do with it. And you want to be part of that, but yet trying to... Okay, let's hear. Let's sit down, take five hours, and let me explain to you how everything that you see as Christian is not Christian, but I'm... the doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't work 
Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Using the scriptures to get people to tithe. Using the scriptures to guilt people to guilt trip people to give. Starting smear campaigns. Just like Jesuits do. Or you gotta take it upon yourself to do fleshly things to try to bring down people. If this work or counsel be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, thou canst not overthrow it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Casting down imaginations, something that you think, and everything and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. See, a lot of these Christians that are coming out today, that are coming up, are what? Sensationalists. All about feeling and emotion. Okay? Are sensual led by their senses, and offer unto you people what? A religious experience. A religious feeling. Okay? You can know you're saved by you talking in tongues. Hey, you can, you can feel that you belong with this denomination of King James Bible-believing Christians. You can belong here. Yeah, yeah. Until you have an oopsie, then you're ostracized. <laughs> Praise the Lord, huh? But see, the Christians that are coming up today are doing what? What are these Christians today? Uh, all, I, like I said, look online here. There are a lot of Christians out there. And we know they're not all saved, obviously. But nonetheless... There are a lot of them out there. So, getting this close to the redemption of the purchased possession, there must be a revival. There must be prosperity because all these Christians are coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. This wisdom, James chapter 3, verse 15, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, sensual, devilish. Jude, Jude, these are these Christians today, Jude, 17, 17 on to, come on, get there, <laughs> verse 17 on to verse 25, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. I have not sent these prophets that they ran. I find it very disturbing to hear someone saying that God is bringing all my dreams that I had as a lost man to pass today. That ought to be a... It's like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. So the Lord is bringing to pass all your dreams that you had as a lost man. What are your dreams? My dream is to go home and to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it! <laughs> That's it! That's all I want! <laughs> I want to go home to be with the Lord! I want out of this, don't you? 
Well, we're going to be here for right now. Yes, I know. And the Lord will provide and take care of his own. How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. I, I see, I see this kind of thing in my father, who is a Christian, who even reads the King James Bible. It's not perfect, of course, he, but whatever. But um, <laughs> it's all about his stuff, all about his material blessings. That proves gain is godliness unto these people, brethren. <laughs> these be they who separate themselves, put themselves up on pedestals. I, I'm better than all of you because God has given me all the desires of my heart, especially when I was a lost man. He's fulfilling all this stuff. So I'm going to separate myself from all of you, sensual, led by their senses, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the O oh, holy flesh, by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Yes, brethren. Yes, brethren. Christianity that is today, even, even the denomination that is now King James Bible believing Christianity, it is a mere denomination now. It's a denomination. Face it. Just like way back when, when they were saying, we're non-denominational. Well, you're a denomination now. You're, we're King James Bible believing Christians. You're a denomination. Well, we are of the sect of the Nazarenes, which is the church of God, the church of the living God, which is the ground and pillar of truth. And most of what is King James Bible-believing Christianity is hallmarked by men. Go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, Proverbs 16, just a couple of one verses here. Proverbs 16, a couple of one verse uh, references here. Proverbs 16, verse 32. Hmm. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than, a, than he that taketh a city. Ruleth his spirit, not controlled by his emotions or feelings. Well, you have no rule over your own spirit, huh? I've run into these Christians who can't control themselves when you scratch them just a little. Their emotion gets the best of them. Those are weaklings, to be honest with you. They really are. But yes, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit, his spirit than he that taketh a city. Mighty and someone who takes the city by their strength. But someone who um, is slow to anger and uh, ruleth his spirit is stronger than that. Hmm. Not ruled by your emotions or your feelings. Which is exactly what Christianity, all flavors of it, is today offering you. An emotional, religious, sensational experience. Fleshly. That's what Christianity is today. And uh, while we're on this, uh, Proverbs 12, one verse, verse 16. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. Yes, it's okay. He, uh, it's okay to have righteous indignation. It's okay to be angry, 
so long as you have a cause, a righteous cause, but a fool's wrath is presently known. And anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Okay? But a prudent man covereth shame. The shame inference here in this verse is a fool's wrath. A fool's wrath. Hmm. Not being led by your emotions or feelings. And uh, Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and, and is confident. Now, we have confidence in our Lord, but see, the fool who saith in his heart that there is no God rageth and is, and is confident in what? Their own heart, in their religious experience. See, if you are putting your trust and faith that you are saved because of some outer experience that you had, because you had uh, this emotional... Th uh, no. No, dear friend. You really... <laughs> <laughs> Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Like I said, I, I, I came across, you know, looking at all these Christians. It's like wow. Wow. And the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh. When? I don't know. Um, it's closer today than it was yesterday. I do believe that the redemption of the purchased possession can happen at any time. I do believe that. Absolutely. They can get that temple up just like that. Okay? Everything is in place. Whatever the Lord is waiting for, I don't know. But, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 7. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. <clears throat> We're not to entangle ourselves with the things of this life. Now, yes, we are to do what we can to make a living, to provide, and the Lord will provide through that thing that he has called us to, to make our living. Yes, he will. But we're not to get entangled with the things of this life. And the things of this life are led by what? Your feelings. Emotions. That's why I say I care really care very little about your feelings. And especially about your emotions. Especially my own. Because that is, again, that is exactly, that is exactly what Christians are offering. And like I said, they're coming out in droves. They're coming out like crazy today. Okay? They're coming out like crazy. This is a sign that things are getting close. <laughs> and yeah, we're not seeking a sign, but it's like you can know that we're approaching the redemption of the purchased possession by all these Christians that are coming out of how big Christianity is becoming. I mean, truly it is. Truly it is. <laughs> Haggai chapter 1. We need to consider something, brother. We need to consider. We really need to consider. Haggai chapter 1, verses 2 on to verse 11. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Our instruction in righteousness now, again, we are not building a physical house today, or a temple, nothing like that. But, 
Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, that does not mean about you getting into weightlifting, but, you know, or anything like that. But we need to consider our ways. We need to examine ourselves daily, brethren. Okay? We really do. We really do. And when people are, you know, these, these charismatics, you know, seven years of prosperity are coming. Uh, your, your breakthrough is coming. Prosperity is in the wings, you know. Uh, uh. So what these people are saying, these people say the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. In other words, um, it's time to revel in the prosperity that the world is going to bring rather than considering whether or not we are right with God. Hmm. And the proof of it is verse 4. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have so much, and ye bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Now, context, he's talking about an actual physical house. Yes, our instruction in righteousness. Take some spiritual inventory. Consider your ways. Examine yourself in Scripture. Are you trusting in an emotion, a feeling that you're saved? Are you trusting that you had a religious experience and I'm saved because I just believed? Or I'm saved because I spake in tongues. I'm saved because God appeared to me. Consider your ways. Because look at all the Christians that are out there right now that are coming out at, at an alarming rate. You're part of that. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. Every man takes thought of the thing of his own things, and not the things of the Lord. Every man thinks about his own rear end, rather than the things of the Lord. Ye are honorable. Ye are wise, you Christians. Why? Because at heart, you have your own preservation, your own flesh at the center of your being. Because it's all about you. Your religious experiences, your emotionalisms, your sensationalist doctrines. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about glorifying you. And you mask it with false humility. It's all about you. It's not. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon all, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. But yet, lots of you are prospering. That could be a very big warning and ought to be a big warning to some of you. Go to Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 on to verse 6. There will come a time when someone who is of the church of the living God will if they will not hear, if they refuse to take correction, um, the Lord will be like, fine, go ahead. Revel in your flesh. Revel in what you know how to do and what you're trusting in. And hey, blessings may come. But the more that you are blessed with, the harder it is for you to be Christ dependent. Think about that. When riches increase, then those that, then that increases 
which desire them. That's totally Bradized, excuse me. But the more things increase for you, the more your desire to see those things, the more your desire for those things grow. The less you have, the more dependent you are on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 and verse 6. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Israel is worse off in this context than an ox and an ass. Because what? The ox knows his owner. And the ass is master's crib. But Israel, God's chosen people, <laughs> doth not know, my people doth not consider. Mm. Our instruction in righteousness. The ox knows his owner and the ass is master's crib. But Israel doth not know my people doth not consider. Are you considering your ways? Hmm? Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken anymore? And such a one to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Anyone? Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed up, they have not been closed, neither bound up neither mollified with ointment, all the while saying, peace, peace, and there is no peace. See, that's what Christians are telling you today. Peace, peace, and there is no peace. Hmm. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. It ought to alarm you at the number of Christians out there today. It ought to alarm you. Uh, I mean, like I said, you look on these social media sites, um, it ought to alarm you. It's like, wow, there are a lot of Christians out there. A lot of people. And atheists who actually have sense in their head see a lot of this stuff. It's like, wow, man, that's, that's just crazy. And it is. It is. Because the premise that Christianity, all these denominations, even the denomination of King James Bible-believing Christianity, has now at its core what? Flesh. Romans 16, 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And of course, with that, we make the cross reference to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, one verse, verse 19. Oh, no, let's read um, verse 18 and 19. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Hmm. Hence, all the denominations which in, within Christianity mind earthly earthly things. It's all about earthly sensual things. And that's what Christianity is doing. That is what Christianity is offering you. 
sensual things, earthly things, a religious experience, an emotional experience, void of truth. Or they might speak truth, but that truth that they're giving you is not based upon that they have an actual living relationship with the living God. No, no. <laughs> Beware, brethren. Beware of the Christians out there. Because like I said, like I said th th do the work yourself. Look it up yourself and see all these Christians that are coming out of the woodwork. I want nothing to do with it. Look at how, look at the, all the denominations out there. And the King James Bible believing Christianity more movement. Why is it so fractured? Why is it so splintered? Because of Jesuit infiltration. But because of men whose God is their belly, who mind earthly things. That's why. Like I've said before, what gets in the way of fellowship uh, with brethren and fellowship of the Spirit? What gets in the way every single time? Flesh. Every single time, it's flesh. It's flesh. And it is flesh that these Christians today are offering you. Flesh and an experience. Like I said, when the Lord saved me, there were no bells or whistles, no hallelujah, ha, no lights coming down from heaven. Nothing like that. Nothing. Let's see. How many are being offered an experience? And how many are... <clears throat> Taking that hook, line, and sinker. How many out there know how to really tap the emotions? Beware, brethren. Beware. And have, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Don't let yourself be allowed to be controlled by your emotions. Because the minute you start letting your emotions get the best of you, then you can tend to walk in the flesh rather than the spirit. Now, there is a place for emotion, absolutely. I'm not, you know, you know, we're not supposed to be walking around emotionless. No, but we are not to be led by those things. And that is what Christianity is harboring on, banking on your feelings and your emotions not truth. Not truth. Just take a look. Whatever, whatever your uh, taste buds are in the mood for, you can find a flavor of Christianity to suit it. So that's going to be it for this little impromptu video. Like I said, I'm going to be, uh, I got some emails to go over today. Wow. Quite a few, actually. <laughs> so, thank you, brethren, all of you who pray for us. We pray for you. Thank you. Thank you so much for those of you who help us and support us and just pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. Without, without the Lord through you, oh boy. Um, this weekend, we got stuff planned. Monday, my wife has an appointment and I'm the taxi. So there will probably not be a video coming this Monday, but i um, got some really big videos coming, of course. Some really big videos coming. But uh, those videos got deterred for this week because of these things that have come up this week. So, But anyway, thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this has helped you. Take warning, brethren. You, you see all these Christians coming out. That That's... that's that's a telltale sign. It's like, whoa, whoa, we're, we're getting close when you got all these people calling themselves Christians coming out like this. Um, that ought to really tell you something. So that's going to be it for this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you do, we love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.